What's up guys, Joseph Varkic here from josephvarkicfitness.com uh, Today, in this video, I'm going to be training chest So I'm going to show you my top 5 tips or techniques that I like to use when training chest Now the first exercise that I'm going to be doing for this chest workout is dumbbell press Now I like to use dumbbell press because it allows me to get a better stretch to the chest So when you're doing a dumbbell press, you can come right the way down And it stretches the chest a little bit more than if you're doing a barbell when you're doing the barbell, the bar obviously touches the chest and you get stopped there. With the dumbbells, you can get that little bit more of a stretch and that allows for greater blood flow into the muscle and uh, greater activation. Also, um, from the chest, there's most chest activation from this part of the push. The higher you get, the less chest activation there is and the more shoulder and the more triceps starts to take over the lift. So, the lowest part of the range of motion is where the most chest activation is that's why dumbbells is um, a very good exercise for the chest. So I'm going to go three sets first. Now I've just previously done some warm up sets. You obviously always want to warm up the muscle before you train it, bring yourself from injury, um, and also just get some blood flow to the muscle so you get a bit more, a bit more power. Also, the way I like to train is progress up in weights, pyramid up. So, for example, my first set could be 20 reps. In my next set, I'll go heavier in weight, it'll be 15. Then I'll go heavier again, it'll be 12. And then eventually get to where there's a set, about 6 or 8. Right now, I'm just working my thumbs. Look at that thumb work I did, you know? Now my rest periods vary um, depending on what muscle group I'm training. So for example, if I'm training legs, and I do a you know, heavy set of 20 rep squats, squats, my rest period could be two, three, maybe even five minutes. If I'm doing bicep curls, my rest period could be maybe 30 seconds. So it always changes. I always like to go when I feel ready. I feel ready about now. So I've got one more set on there and then I'll go to the next chest exercise and show you guys next chest tip. Alright guys, so the tip for this one it's a technique. Now, this technique can be also applied to when you're doing bench press or even dumbbell press. What a lot of people do, when they're training chest, they just push forward. Now what that does, the secondary muscles such as your shoulder and your tricep tend to take over. 
Now a technique that I like to use is obviously when training your chest you want as much stress on your chest and to eliminate the stress from your secondary muscles such as your shoulders and triceps. So a technique that I like to do is I drop my traps down. So I drop my traps down and then I pinch my shoulder blades back together. And then I puff my chest up. And I keep my chest puffed up throughout the exercise. So when I'm doing bench press, when I'm doing this machine here, I'm walking around with my chest puff, puffed up. I'm not walking around, but sitting down <laughs> or lying down. So I really exaggerate um, the chest puffed up. And so what that does, it places all the stress on the chest, which is what you want, and eliminates the shoulders and triceps. So take a look as I get in this one. So this technique can be applied for bench press as well, guys. So you drop your traps down, pinch your shoulder blades back together, and puff your chest up. Puff your chest up as much as you can. Keep it puffed up. So now my shoulders are eliminated as much as possible and all that stress and all that activation is right where you want it, right on the chest. So there's a difference between weightlifting and lifting weights to build the muscle. Now if you want to lift the weights, obviously just move it forward. But because we're trying to work the chest, we really focus on our technique and our form. And the three sets of that from the machine. So the two secondary muscles on this machine, or bench press, are your shoulders and your triceps. Um, now that pinching your shoulder blades back, dropping your trap, puffing your chest up, will eliminate the shoulders, but your triceps will be activated a little bit. So will your, sh um, so will your shoulders, sorry. Your triceps are still going to be activated, but a technique that I use for my triceps to deactivate them as much as possible is keep them flared. Now, when when you're doing bench press or a press exercise, if your elbows are too close to your body using a close grip, what do you end up doing? You end up pushing from the back of your arm. So you're pushing from the back of your arm, which is your tricep. So I always like to flare my elbows a little bit, not too much, where it's to our shoulders, just enough. So the chest is doing 90% of the weight. You only want your secondary muscles to be your secondary muscles. find all these tips and techniques useful and you can apply it to your own training and if there is any particular muscle groups or anything that you guys want to know just ask me in the comment section down below and I'd be more than happy uh, to do a video for you guys. Always, always good to get content ideas. And also guys, if you want um, your own personalized workout program from me, a uh, personalized meal plan, I'd be happy to have you as one of my JF clients. Just look at the link that's on the screen right now. And I'd be more than happy to create a workout program um, or meal plan for you. And the link to my website is also in the description box down below, guys. Alright, so third and final set. So again, drop my traps down, pinch my shoulder blades back together, puff my chest up, just pretend you're Arnold. Alright, third exercise now for chest guys, we're doing incline dumbbell flies. Now the tip or technique that I'm going to show you here is 
Um, it's actually one that I learned from Arnold. I watched you know, his videos. Um, now, it's about using a partial range of motion. So, when you're doing a dumbbell fly, what most people do, they come down like this, they get a good stretch, and they bring the weights right up, and they touch the dumbbells together. What happens when the two dumbbells are touched together? Um, there's no force pulling against them, there's no gravity pulling against them, because they're just, they're resting on your shoulders, basically. I could pick up, you know, the heaviest weights, not the heaviest weights, <laughs> the end of the rack there, and just hold it above in here, and it's not really putting any stress on my chest. My chest is getting a rest, you don't want your chest to get a rest. So, a technique that I like to use when training chest, for flies is use a partial range of motion. So I get a big stretch and then I only bring the weights to there. And if I only bring the weights to there, constantly the stress is on the chest because because of gravity the weight's heavy and it's automatically pulling you down. So your chest has to fight to keep it there. Now if I bring it all the way and connect, the, chest, the stress is gone from the chest. So it's really important when doing dumbbell flies to use a partial range of motion. Don't connect the dumbbells together. You can connect your hands together if you're using the pec deck machine or the cable machine. Because when you bring the weight all the way together, because it's a machine, because it's a cable, there's still tension pulling against you. So it's still gonna be stress on the chest. However, when you're using dumbbells, just go partial range of motion. So this is not what, you don't want to do this. Don't connect them like this. Bring it to about there and back down. Muscle growth is from overload. Now, there are many types of overload. There's stress overload, there's repetition overload, there's weight overload. So when you're doing this exercise here, it's just constant stress, constant tension on the muscle, and that's going to produce overload on the muscle, which is going to lead to muscle growth. Always make sure you go the same weights as well. It's another tip. It's a bonus tip for you guys. I've done it before off shoulders, I've grabbed two different weights. But I only found that after my set. Partial. Quick stretch, partial. Partial. Alright guys, this exercise here, um, we're doing dumbbell pullovers. Now this is a very old school exercise, uh, and the tip or technique for this exercise is you want to focus on having a very good muscle-mind connection. So don't just go through the mo movement, don't just go through the exercise. Um, what a lot of people do, they just, they just do the exercise without actually having that good muscle-mind connection. So don't just pull the weight over and bring it back. What you have to do, you have to really focus on the muscle being worked. So when I do my dumbbell pullovers, I get a good stretch to the chest, and then with my mind, I really think about what I'm trying to work, which is my chest. So with my mind, I connect it to my chest, and I focus on pulling the weight down with my chest, and then contracting and squeezing. And then I focus the weight getting a big stretch, and then using the chest to pull the weight. So I'm really focusing on my chest muscle being worked and not just moving the weight. Muscle mind connection is probably one of the most important things to developing and growing your muscles. You have to have that connection in everything you do actually. Especially with biceps, you know? People in the gym curling biceps like this. It's so much more effective if you can really feel, squeeze and contract the muscle. It's all about focus. So now I'll show you how to do them. 
Three sets of that. Pro tip, when you forget your towel, <laughs> use your t-shirt. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Fuck, I think we're giving them more tips than five. <laughs> <laughs> Fifth and final exercise for chest. We're doing chest press machine. Now the tip or technique that I'm going to show you here is to really focus on the negative rep. Now the negative rep is when you bring the weight back, uh, back towards you. The reason being is because what well, most people don't know or understand, there is more muscle fibers ripped in the negative um, than the positive push. So we're really focusing on the negative for this exercise specifically. Nice, slow and controlled, and focus on ripping the muscle fibers that way. Where a lot of people when they do heavy bench press, or heavy press, or chest press, or dumbbells, it's just natural to drop the weight down and push up. Drop the weight down and push up. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna focus on controlling the weight down, and then push up. Controlling the weight down, and then push up. about four seconds on the way back. So this is what most people do, they got this. And that is just missing the whole negative range. So focus, and use your chest to control it. Three sets of that guys and that'll be the end of the chest workout today and there was five tips or techniques that you may or may not have known and if you didn't hope you learned something new <laughs> yeah, like I said before guys if you've got any um, specific videos that you want me to do or film or talk about just post down in the comment section below and I'm happy to answer your questions or do a full video for you two more sets One, two, three, four. One, two, 
three, four. One, two, three, four. One, three, four. And there you go guys, that was the end of my chest workout. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you liked it. Um, new videos every single day, so make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you do need help with a personalized meal plan or workout program, visit my website. Uh, the link is down below in the description box. Thank you for watching. Now it's time for me to get some sushi.